Can vaccines cause infertility? It's a question people have asked themselves since the development of the world's first inoculation against smallpox almost 250 years ago. And with COVID-19, it's happening all over again. My friend, she's worried about like women going infertile and stuff like that, and just like a bunch of stuff that can happen, and so she's not getting it. And it's not only women who are worried. Men are anxious too. They fear their sperm count could be affected by the jab. Why are such rumors so persistent? Welcome to your COVID-19 special here on DW. I'm Janelle Dumalaon. Posts on social media about COVID-19 vaccines and infertility are being widely shared. Some specifically link mRNA vaccines like the BioNTech Pfizer and Moderna jabs to reproductive issues in women. But what does the science actually say? Our reporter Pippa Stevens has a look. To understand why COVID-19 vaccines don't cause infertility, we need to understand a bit of biology. These rumours all swirl around two proteins. The first is syncytin-1. That's produced by women's bodies when they're pregnant. It helps to build the placenta, which helps support the growing baby. Number two is the spike protein on the coronavirus particle. We're probably a bit more familiar with that one. mRNA vaccines train the body to target this protein. And the way they do that is with antibodies. Antibodies are produced in response to a COVID-19 vaccination. The antibodies then recognize part of the COVID-19 virus particle if the body encounters it and stops it invading cells. The rumor is that these antibodies somehow get confused and end up targeting syncytin-1 instead, therefore harming the placenta in the unborn baby. Now, if this were the case, you've got to remember antibodies are produced by natural infections with COVID-19 as well. So if it was the case that antibodies attack the placenta, then you'd expect to see a much higher rate of pregnancy complications in corona-positive pregnant women. And that just isn't borne out in the data. Researchers in the US found no evidence of increased placental abnormalities, hospitalizations, or adverse pregnancy outcomes in 252 COVID-positive pregnant women compared to over 3,000 women who didn't have COVID. The rumours come from the idea that sensitin-1 and the spike protein look basically the same to the body. Now there are some similarities, but an analysis by researchers in Poland and the US found those similarities are really way too small to risk confusing the immune system. There is no plausible biological mechanism by which mRNA vaccines could interfere with a woman's reproductive system. That's a fact mirrored by the evidence mRNA vaccines do not cause infertility. That was a reporter, Pippa Stevens, taking apart the myth of COVID-19 vaccines causing infertility in women. But what is the picture like for men? Well, to find out more about that, we're joined by Ranjith Ramasamy. He is the Director of Reproductive Urology at the University of Miami. Welcome to you. Now, vaccinations have no influence on female fertility, as we heard there. But what about men? So COVID virus itself has been studied to evaluate effects on male fertility. So the virus itself can adversely impact the sperm parameters and male fertility. So there were concerns when the vaccines came out that the vaccines could also have the same effect on male fertility. And so we investigated on whether COVID vaccines can affect the sperm parameters. And as part of the emergency use authorization, uh, the companies didn't really do reproductive toxicity evaluation as is done for most drugs. And so there was another concern that this safety parameter was not presented to the FDA when the vaccines were rolled out. But you have now published a report saying that COVID-19 is linked to male infertility and sexual dysfunction. What do we know now? So we do know now that the COVID virus can actually be present uh, within the testis and within the penis uh, long after the initial infection. Uh, how it's able to evade the immune system, uh, what it's uh, doing inside these organs after such a long time once the infection is cleared, uh, we still don't know. Further research needs to be done. But it appears that it causes some sort of inflammatory effects adversely impacting both uh, sperm production 
uh, as well as the blood supply to the penis leading to erectile dysfunction. But what do we know so far about how exactly the COVID infection, uh, the COVID, effect, uh, COVID infection attacks male sexual health? So we do know that the uh, blood supply to the penis uh, is similar to the blood supply to most of the other organs in the body, uh, like the heart, the kidney, the lungs. And just like how the COVID virus affects all the other organs in the body, uh, causing uh, dysfunction, it's the same exact thing with the penis. It affects erectile dysfunction by affecting the blood supply to the penis. Now, one thing all these studies have in common and these sample tests is that they didn't have very, um, they didn't have a big group of participants. How certain are you of the findings? So, uh, the, yes, I agree that most of the studies have been pilot studies with uh, small sample sizes, including our own. Uh, however, uh, we're now uh, evaluating this on a population level, and uh, we see similar findings. I don't think the effect is dramatic, uh, but I, we suspect there's about a 20 to 30 percent chance of men developing erectile dysfunction after the COVID infection. And I think we also don't know if the severity of the COVID infection actually affects erectile dysfunction and whether this is permanent, uh, whether uh, these uh, symptoms will start improving with time, or do men need to be worried about some sort of a long-lasting effect of erectile dysfunction after a COVID infection? I think all of these answers uh, still remain to be studied. What response do you think there should be to all this information spreading about infertility and COVID? Uh, so I think the actual virus itself uh, seems to have a negative impact on male reproductive health, on uh, sperm production, on testosterone production, uh, as well as on uh, erectile function. Uh, I think the information should be loud and clear uh, that uh, men and couples, uh, because infertility is a couple's problem, uh, should try and avoid uh, getting COVID uh, virus at, at all costs. And how would you rate the existing level of awareness? We did point out that there is a lot of misinformation out there, but what can we do about that, really? Um, I, I'm happy you're doing a segment on this. I think we are trying to improve awareness by, by publishing more studies, uh, by providing more valid data to the scientific literature, so uh, the information does spread about the adverse impacts of this virus. Uh, most people think this is just a common cold, just like the flu, that it comes and goes away. Uh, but this virus seems to have a lot more uh, negative impacts and long-lasting effects, not just on reproductive health, but um, certainly on cognition, uh, lung function, cardiac function, renal function, uh, for much longer time than just a simple flu or a common cold. Ranjit Ramasamy, he is the Director of Reproductive Urology at the University of Miami. Thank you very much. Thank you. Shifting gears now, did you know that today is World Mosquito Day? What might that have to do with COVID-19? Well, one of you is interested in that link, so here's our science correspondent, Derek Williams, with one of your questions. Can the virus be transmitted via an insect, like when a mosquito bites you? The answer to this question, we're quite certain, is no. But what makes the question really interesting is why the answer is no and how scientists came to that conclusion. Because the answer to the question might just as easily have been yes, right? I mean, after all, there's a long list of, of nasty diseases that are mosquito-borne. Uh, first and foremost among them, malaria, which is caused by single-celled parasites from the plasmodium group. Um, but mosquitoes can also transmit a number of dangerous viruses, among them those that cause uh, yellow fever or Zika or West Nile fever. But other horrible pathogens, like the ones that cause HIV or Ebola, for example, and SARS-CoV-2, they're transmitted mostly from human to human. They aren't carried by biting insects like mosquitoes. So why? Well, it comes down to whether or not the insect can itself be infected. Uh, when it bites someone who's infected with a disease-causing pathogen, 
The blood that a mosquito swallows, of course, enters its digestive tract, which naturally has multiple defenses to prevent the mosquito from being infected by its dinner. Uh, to be passed on by the insect, the pathogen has to overcome those defenses. Then it has to, to replicate inside of the mosquito, and then it has to reach its salivary glands in sufficient numbers to infect a new host. And not every virus can manage that. Um, it requires evolving a highly specific set of abilities. A flurry of studies early in the pandemic showed that, uh, like other closely related coronaviruses, SARS-CoV-2 apparently can't replicate in insects, which led healthcare authorities to heave a, a huge sigh of relief. Uh, because they transmit so many deadly diseases, mosquitoes kill more humans every year than any other animal out there. But at least they aren't making the COVID-19 pandemic any worse. Before we go, a quick look at some other pandemic developments that made news this week. Japan extended its state of emergency until mid-September. That will affect the Tokyo Paralympics, which will be held mostly without spectators due to a severe rise in coronavirus infections. The Paralympics are set to begin on the 24th of August. And the German Vaccine Commission is now recommending that all 12 to 17-year-olds get a COVID-19 jab. The commission says its evaluation is based on new data from the vaccination program in the U.S. Thanks for watching and stay safe.